Welcome back to another Film Geek Movie Review. And unfortunately, due to some crappy weather here in Kansas City, I have not been able to go see all the films I wanted to when I wanted to. I was actually going to go see this movie last night, but due to some bad weather, I'm now seeing it early this morning. So... If you're watching this right now, then I actually have just seen this movie this morning, got home, edited, uploaded, and here it is. Congratulations me, I guess. I have time right now. I'm on Christmas break from the old day job. So I figured, what the hell, let's go check out some movies. So today I'm checking out the new film, Babylon. Babylon is the latest in the big bombastic Hollywood films with a bunch of stars in them. And unfortunately, we haven't seen those do so well this year. Nothing with like a lot of the, you know, group of stars coming together to make a film. A lot of those haven't really done so great. And I'm not just saying financially, I'm just saying they haven't been the best films. Like earlier this year, Amsterdam, and you know, something like that. I, I want to say Hello Darling, that was another one that had a lot of names and nothing really came from that film but this one I'm hoping I honestly am hoping fingers crossed that it ends here that this movie is a good film because it looks cool and I'm interested in this movie a lot okay so what is Babylon Babylon tells the story of uh, early Hollywood the transition from the silent film era into the talkies and so this takes place in either late 20s, early 30s, somewhere around there when that big transition happens. And it looks like it's going to depict Hollywood in just one giant drug-fueled, soaked in alcohol party. It looks like nothing but complete and absolute debauchery through this entire film and honestly hey that could be a lot of fun also brad pitt it looks like from the trailer it looks like he's having a great time in this movie and i know that brad said recently that he's only taking roles that he really feels come like really um like sounds like fun is what he said like, like that was something i saw in an interview with bullet train was that at this point in his career he's taking movie roles because they just sound interesting or fun to make so i'm really hoping that this falls into at least one of those categories interesting fun and hopefully it's interesting and fun and good so enough of me yammering because i've got a lot of work to do it's time for me to hit the road and go check out babylon Welcome back, just getting home from checking out Babylon, and I've got my mixed feelings about this movie. I don't think it was necessarily a god-awful film, but at the same time, I don't think it was all that great either. Alright, so let's get into my thoughts. I'm going to start off with the negative, and then I'm going to end on some positives, okay, so we can end this on a high note. The first thing I want to talk about is, there is about an hour and 45 minutes of a really good movie here, and a really solid story. The downside is that this movie is three hours long. It is long. And it does not need to be. There's nothing that's making this film long. Nothing. You know, like I've said before, I don't necessarily mind a movie that's going to take a better part of the afternoon, which it did. I saw this movie at 10 a.m. and I got done with it at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. All right, so yeah, this took up a small portion of my afternoon just to see this movie. So plan ahead if you really want to see this film. 
But the thing is, is that this movie does not need to be this long. There's a lot of stuff in this film that does not need to be there. And the way the movie kind of goes is, is it tells the story of different people in the film industry during the changing of cinema, when movies went from silent films into talkie, a real big time period in Hollywood, changed everything we know about movies. Okay, here's the thing. I don't understand what the message was in this film. Was this supposed to be one of those Hollywood chews you up and spits you out stories? You know, only the tough can live in LA? Or was this supposed to be some nostalgic film about a bygone era? I don't know because the film doesn't decide what it wants to be. It'll float back and forth from being this like story of woe and be careful and cautionary tales and then it just kind of goes into a massive freaking excessive party. In fact, I want to say the first 30-35 minutes of this film well, first off, it's pretty much the trailer that you guys see. When you when you see the trailer for this mill film, it's pretty much the beginning of the movie. And then there's some other scenes that are thrown in there that happen, like, right after the beginning of the movie. But for, like, 30, 35 minutes, I want to say it's just this big-ass party. And it's just going from, oh, these people doing some crazy as shit over here. And then there's people doing crazy shit over here. And, oh, my God, look up on the ceiling. Crazy shit up there. It's just so much stuff just packed in that you don't have enough time to even pay attention to what the fuck is going on. And it doesn't help that the storytelling isn't all that great because, unfortunately, a movie like this has been done before. There are plenty of movies that have been told about the golden age of cinema or, you know, when things changed or when this time period, so on and so forth. And this film doesn't bring anything new to the party except body fluids. Be prepared for lots of body fluids. There's a good amount of them in this film. And, I mean, it just... I don't understand what the point of this movie was. I don't know who this film was for. It's not for people who want to feel nostalgic about cinema. It's not for people who want to see the dark, seedy underbelly because it doesn't spend enough time there. So I don't know what this film is for. And I don't know why they had to make it three hours long. Oh, okay, so I think that's enough ranting on the negatives of this film. Like I said, this movie was a 50-50 for me. The positives. The actors are phenomenal. Okay, with what the, I shouldn't say limited script, because there's a shitload of script in this film, but <laughs> what they had to work with, basically, they do a great job. Every one of the actors in this film are outstanding. Um, our two big leads, I would say, in this film, Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, outstanding performances. Loved them in this movie. I thought they were great. I think that the actors did a great job making this film entertaining because without them, holy crap, this would have been another Heaven's Gate. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say this could have been a Heaven's Gate, look it up watch it and then come back to my channel and go yeah i see what you're talking about man so yeah that's all i really have the biggest positive oh oh i also left out one thing and that's something that it seems that, again these big bloated hollywood stuff as many stars as we possibly can in films and that is the cinematography is gorgeous the the movie is is filmed absolutely beautifully there's some extremely awesome tracking shots in this film i love stuff like that i always like when the camera just kind of like latches in on somebody and follows them around the room there's a lot of really cool camera techniques used in this film and i loved it for that it really made the film it took it to the next level and it really did just like the actors keep this film from not being a complete and absolute disaster for me Okay, guys, so what do I think? Okay, well, this holiday season, there's a lot of movies you can go see. First off, if you haven't seen Avatar yet, still say go see that one in theaters. This one, I would stream it. Um, I went and saw it at uh, one of the big almost IMAX screens. A AMC has this thing called the Prime Theater where it's like intense sounds. Sometimes it's, your seats will shake or something like that's a snow plow. If you hear that, that's a snow plow outside. If you you watch the first part of my video, you would know we had a little bit of a snowstorm around here. But anyways, um, <laughs> I saw it on the prime screen. So intense sound, really big screen. 
and none of that really mattered. So honestly, I mean, again, I said uh, the cinematography is beautiful and all, but whatever. You just watch this when it pops up on a streaming service. Whatever streaming service it pops up on, check it out. If you got time, you're probably going to have to watch it in two settings because who has enough time to spend watching this movie? So that's all I got for you today, guys. It was funny because I'm talking about how I'm complaining about it being long, and I also suggested going and seeing Avatar. But that movie, I swear to you, again, another plug for Avatar flows on by. I'm using it as an example because it's about the same time length, and I didn't feel the three hours as much as... Like, when I saw Avatar, I didn't feel the three hours as much. This movie, I felt it. Like, about halfway through, I'm like, let's go, wrap it up, let's go, let's go. And it just kept going. All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you today. If you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications, and give me the old thumbs up so I know you like what you're seeing. And if there's one more thing you could do, folks, that is keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna.